All right, how's it going, everybody? Uh, I'm just going to run through some pretty quick things uh, with regard to canvassing here in Alabama. Um, we're running down on the wire, so uh, my training schedules uh, are not really keeping up with people's demand uh, or you know the the local needs of district coordinators and uh, events that are going to be popping up here at the end. Uh, we're going to get people out there that uh, you know didn't have time to come to my training schedules uh, or sessions or whatever, and I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure that everybody knows the basics, uh, so there's no problems down the road. For the most part, uh, we're doing a data collection effort. There's not going to be any arguing. You're not going to be knocking on people's doors or calling people up to shout them down about what you believe. This is about data collection. We find Ron Paul supporters. We engage them and we try to get them out as volunteers. But uh, for right now, we're just trying to talk to people and find out what they're interested in. Um, with the phone from home program, we've got uh, you know every base covered, and I'm going to walk you through that here in a second. Um, with the document, I'll show you exactly how to use it. Um, you know, when it comes to doing door to door, uh, there's a different you know host of concerns. Mainly, uh, people can see us, address so appropriately. Um, but you know, I, I think basically the the unifying theme here is you're representing the campaign. You are representing the campaign when you talk to voters. Uh, how would uh, Dr. Paul act? What would Ron Paul do? That's a very you know good way to establish yourself uh, before you go door to door. Uh, some of us that are interested in fashion might not want to necessarily uh, consider what Ron Paul would do, uh, but at the same time, you know, you want to be, you know, a good representative of the campaign. You want to dress nicely. Uh, you want to, you know, encourage uh, people to leave all of their prejudice or assumptions about Ron Paul supporters at the door. Uh, we do kind of have a, you know, uh, an image problem. Uh, I, I come from a, the younger crowd of Ron Paul supporters. Uh, I recently graduated from college. And uh, I notice when I go door to door, sometimes people will open the door and say, oh, I don't want to legalize marijuana and slam it on me, you know. So I take steps that I know will help, you know, deter that image. I shave, I comb my hair a little bit, you know, I just run my fingers through it. I might wear a button-up shirt, as I did to record this video, just so that, uh, you know, I put out that image that, you know, I'm not a terrible person. I can at least put on a button-up shirt when I'm doing something professional. Uh, not that you'd be a terrible person if you didn't, but uh, just something to consider. Also, um, you know, the same uh, kind of general themes apply whether you're canvassing uh, over the phone or door-to-door. -door. Uh, you know, no arguing. Uh, you got to be as polite as you can, but you have to show sincere interest in what, uh, you know, the voter that you're talking to is concerned about. Uh, if they don't support Ron Paul, why don't they support Ron Paul? We're not asking them that in the phone calls, but we're asking them what their big issue is, uh, and, and that's the most important thing. Uh, we want to know. We care. We care who they're going to vote for. Uh, and, you know, even if it's not Ron Paul, it shouldn't make us angry. Th that means that we haven't done our job in convincing enough people. So, uh, you know, just ask them, you know, who are you going to vote for? Uh, what's the issue? Uh, say they're going to vote for Santorum, but, you know, they think that uh, winning in November or beating Obama is the biggest issue. Well, there's a host of problems with, you know, picking Santorum as your guy if that's what you want. Uh, so, you know, that allows us to draft our message and, and recontact that person, you know, and, and allow them uh, the greatest opportunity to, you know, get the information necessary to switch over to our side. So think about that. Um, you know, think about how you would react if somebody contacted you, uh, how you would want them to treat you, how you would want them to respect you, um, you know, how you would want them to handle the conversation in general. Uh, I know I tend to get a little bit irritated when I get phone calls from people raising money that I don't support. I don't know how that happens, but it does, and, uh, you know, sometimes I'm rude. And I know that it's, you know, the kid on the other line is just doing his job or just trying to volunteer and make a difference, but I still have my fun with him. So consider people are going to do that. Consider that, you know, people are going to, you know, come into this with a negative intention. So um, if you think about all this stuff beforehand, uh, familiarize yourself with it, get comfortable with it, it really shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you're going to run into so many more positive people and interesting experiences than, you know, anybody that's negative or upset. Uh, so it's not anything to worry about. Uh, you just need to, you know, uh, try to make this as much of a social and fun, you know, activity as you can so that your friends can get involved, so that you maintain your level of commitment through the uh, primary. And uh, so that, you know, that enthusiasm rubs off because it does. If people see that you're interested and you're excited about something and it's positively affecting your life, they're going to want to know what the secret is. They're going to want to know, you know, why you're so happy about politics while everybody else is so upset. So uh, consider that, um, you know, as the unifying theme for canvassing in the state. Uh, when going door to door, you know, there's some ground rules, uh, you know, don't walk through yards, uh, don't park in front of people's houses, don't leave trash, knock first, you know, that goes a, a real long way with people with young children, babies, and large dogs. 
Um, also, don't use mailboxes. Uh, you know, and bring dog treats too, because that helps uh, you know smooth over people with the dog owners and their dogs are barking or going crazy. Gives you an opportunity to engage them a little bit. Um, you know, so you, most of this stuff is pretty common sense, uh, but uh, you know, for the most part, we really need to stress the idea that we're not arguing with anybody. That you know, the biggest advantage that we have is that we're making a real, sincere engagement with voters. And any other candidate, uh, whether they come down here and make a speech or they pay for you know a few thousand signs to be put out, this connection. The connection that you or I make with a voter and talking about what they're concerned about, that's going to make the difference. Having that conversation is going to be the most important interaction that every person we contact has had in this entire election cycle. So remember that. Remember that, you know, even sounding disappointed or disillusioned or tired or irritated or uninterested on the phone is wasted resource. That's essentially wasted time. So. Uh, you know, you got to be engaging. You got to, you got to get the information. You got to make people, uh, you got to make people feel from the urgency in your voice, the excitement in your voice, that this is the most important thing that they could be doing right now with their time and their energy. So, um, you know, why are you excited? Don't call up and tell people why you're excited. Think about it. Why are you excited? What gets you motivated? What makes you want to act? Why do you want to act? Do you care about other people? That's why I do. I care about everybody. I care about all individuals. I want to protect their rights. I want to protect their liberty. So when I call voters, even if I don't agree with them, even if I, you know, I'm frustrated by the fact that they're not a Ron Paul supporter, it's not about that. It's about engaging that person and finding out what they think is the most important issue and then finding out a way to you know, talk to them that isn't going to alienate them and that's going to help them see that, you know, uh, caring for others is really the best way. Caring for the individual is the best way. Uh, th that Ron Paul has the biggest uh, pro-peace platform probably ever. Uh, so, you know, we're, we win on the arguments. We just need to make sure that people have a positive experience. They associate us with, you know, cheery, happy, upbeat politics. And, um, you know, that they get a sense that we really do sincerely care. So, um, you know, if I missed anything, your district coordinators are going to be able to fill you in on any of the gaps. I'm going to go through here and show you how to use our uh, cold calling program. Um, but, you know, uh, like I said, just remember, you're your own person. Uh, you know, be decent. Be as good of a person as you always been. Uh, just uh, make sure, you know, that you take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, thicken up your skin, have a good time, and uh, make sure that, you know, you always think about what would Ron Paul do. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick this into uh, the step-by-step -step for uh, the cold calling program. All right. Uh, to get started here, you're going to go ahead and uh, open up your Google account. Uh, you need a Google account to get started with this, so make sure you have one. Make sure you're logged in. And uh, you'll go to the Documents page where you'll find uh, the shared call roster, which will be Ron Paul 2012 AL call roster. You'll open that up. Uh, to your left uh, in column A you'll see a list of phone numbers uh, that's where you'll be placing your caller ID number which is your phone number uh, and to the right is the link uh, with uh, the voter information uh, where you'll click when you're ready to begin the survey uh, up in the right hand corner is uh, the share button so if somebody uh, in your group uh, does not have access to this document yet you can go ahead and share it with them uh, by following this process uh, and then you're going to go ahead and scroll down to the next available field um, and get started on phone calls. So what you're going to do is uh, find the next available number, click the field, and uh, enter in your phone number. And then you'll go ahead and click the link and uh, open up the survey in another tab. Here you'll see that the uh, information has already been placed into the fields. Uh, there's a phone number, first and last name. When you have the person on the phone, you're ready to begin your survey. Say they choose yes, I, I uh, am voting in the primary, and you'll be uh, given the option to pick which candidate they support. Uh, if they support Ron Paul, uh, the survey switches to uh, more of a volunteer outreach form, uh, which some of you may have experience with. Uh, and you can you know, even choose from the programs that they might want to get involved with, and then take as detailed of notes as possible. Um, If it's uh, not uh, Ron Paul supporter, if it's any other candidate, you'll uh, have the option to record down the strength of their support, uh, potentially a secondary candidate, and whatever their most important issue uh, in this election is. 
Now, uh, there's also an option for voicemail, which changes the nature of the call a little bit because uh, we will be leaving a partisan uh, message on answering machines given that we won't be able to call these people back. Uh, so the message is provided if you choose uh, voicemail. Um, and also be sure to note that uh, you're only required to let people know that you're calling on behalf of Ron Paul if asked. Uh, we want to make sure that this is not a partisan uh, phone call uh, if they're not a supporter. Uh, and then uh, once you're finished, you can come back and start the process again or uh, go ahead and close out and finish up for the day.